Welcome to She is Fab, where we discuss all things fab, women empowerment, and life coaching. My name is Evelyn Betances, also known as the Fab Chief Desk. And today I have the pleasure of speaking to Laura. Laura is a scientist, specifically a chemist. Laura, do you want to tell us a bit about yourself? Hi. Thank you for welcoming me in your podcast. So I am French. You can hear it with my accent. <laughs> and uh, I am a PhD in uh, chemistry, material chemistry. And uh, I am um, doing research since about 10 years. So I'm a researcher also. That's amazing. So Laura is here today to help me talk about imposter syndrome and her experience with imposter syndrome in her field. Uh, as I mentioned, she is a scientist, a chemist, and as you know, when you're a scientist, you have to be an expert in your field of expertise. So Laura's going to share with us uh, her experience with imposter syndrome. Thank you. So actually, as a scientist, you you have like high expectation from your peers. And uh, when I started, I started quite young. So I was really young, like uh, maybe 24 or something like this when I started to add the, have my own lab. And um, I was, uh, I would say also maybe not, uh, I had the level, but I was not at the level that I wanted really to be at. So I was always a bit scared to um, not be like, uh, to, to be able to answer properly questions or, so for example, if I had uh, to write a publication, so we have to write the report or whatever, I was always like super perfectionist and looking every detail, every point. And sometimes like, because I was afraid that, uh, it will not be enough to, 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 it will not be enough actually. But mm -hmm. sometimes if I just let it re read to someone else, the person was telling me, oh, it's okay or whatever. But I was so scared to show it to, to someone that uh, sometimes I was like blocked and I could not uh, go forward. Mm -hmm. That is so interesting that you say that because um... I've talked about imposter syndrome and put some tips and tricks out there for managing that. And one of the things that is associated with imposter syndrome is perfectionism. So, so perfectionism prevents you from moving forward and jumping on opportunities because you're so stuck in trying to make something perfect. And perfectionism really is an illusion when you think about it. And actually an excuse, an excuse that limits you from really putting a value out there. You mentioned that you got your own lab at 24. So that was a pretty young age to be managing uh, your own lab. So I can understand how that would bring up some fear and some imposter syndrome, but you have a PhD. And as I understand it, it takes many years to get a PhD. So tell me yeah. how long did you study to obtain that? Uh, eight years. Eight years. So yes. eight years of studying. Yeah. You have all of this experience. Granted, you know, it's in school. And I'm sure you also had a network of peers. But yes. even so, you found yourself lacking a little bit of confidence in your authority. Yeah. <laughs> and it's so interesting because, again, you went to school for that long to become yes. an authority figure. But yet once you were in the field, once you got your own lab and you got the responsibility, you started to feel that imposter syndrome. Mm. So did anyone um, in the lab, did any of your peers uh, help you with that? Did you talk to them about how you were feeling? So yes, I had a lot of help because I always, okay, for example, if I have, um, I write a publication or whatever, I always keep it to myself a lot, but I usually am really open to talk with, to ask questions. I am not scared to ask, ask the question, but if I have to finish and show the final product, I will keep it like, a, I will be like super scared to, to show to other people. I will say it's not enough, it's not enough, not enough. So mm -hmm. I can take like maybe months uh, to before showing the, the results. The actual work. Yeah, actually, gotcha. yes. So I actually used to work for a biotech 
a couple of years back. And as I understood it, when scientists would interview for a role, they had to essentially present, right? Some form of solutioning and speak to their experience. Yes. How was that interview process for you? How did you feel putting the content together and then presenting it to an audience? <laughs> I was scared. <laughs> you were scared? I was a bit terrified, yes, yes. And several times actually I could not uh, do present well the results because I was, but after what I did actually to a bit um, improve, it's to prepare, I had to prepare more. So to take more time to also like follow trainings and look a bit on the internet, how, how can I improve my presentations mm -hmm. or, or show to my peers also to present more and so on. So I think you can work on it and improve but uh, you really have to say, okay, I, I, I have to put the work mm -hmm. to like uh, feel a bit more comfortable, I would say. Do you think that the fear that you had, was it just based off of maybe not having confidence in your public speaking skills or was it also partly because of that imposter syndrome? I think it's both. Both? <laughs> it's not a combination of everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So like, that, can, uh, that can be very difficult. Were there any sort of mantras or techniques or anything that you tried to alleviate some of that nervousness, that fear, that imposter syndrome? No. <laughs> uh, now, now I, I with the, now I, I, I improve, I guess, because I learn and so on. So my <laughs> mantra was work more and you will have results. <laughs> so if you have That's to fair. improve, yes. You improve by working, you fail, okay, you learn, and then you continue, you fail, and you learn a bit more. And that's how I, I was thinking. Mm -hmm. See, and I, I love thinking. that. Because <laughs> it's true, that's how it is, right? You have to fail in order yeah. to learn, gain experience. That failure will then allow you to adapt and change, modify, and yeah. then you learn. And so the next time you attempt it, you do better. Yeah. I think a lot of folks uh, will sometimes not pursue something yeah. or cut themselves short because they're afraid of failing. But I fully believe that failure is a stepping stone to success. And so you shouldn't be as afraid to fail. You shouldn't limit yourself because yeah. of the potential of failing. So I'm glad to see that you learned from it and you continue to adapt and yeah. prepare to get better. Yeah, yeah. So now and you did, did you have some uh, and you did you have some uh, imposter syndrome? I see maybe some example or and how oh. did you? All the time. All the time. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, even now as a mindset coach, I still have moments where I may not be as sure in my own authority. And I have to remind myself of why I'm doing what I'm doing and where the expertise comes from. I can tell you, I have had several career transitions throughout my life. Um, my bachelor's is actually in media arts and animation. So art, you can see some art back here. It's not mine, but Very I nice. love art. Um, <laughs> then I worked in the IT industry for biotech, you know, for some time. Then we have the transition to project management. And then lastly, uh, the coaching, which mm -hmm. is more, it was more of a passion project that then became, you know, this, this hustle. Mm -hmm. But through every transition, even though I had the authority, even though I, you know, got my master's mm -hmm. uh, in project management, I still felt that there was a lack. Like I wasn't fully seated in my authority and my confidence. And a lot of that didn't just come from me. It also came from external sources. So one of the things that I experienced professionally is that individuals would challenge your authority. So in the workforce, those that, that have worked in corporate, you know, you and I, um, there are very varying uh, personalities. And sometimes those personalities don't quite align and there can be relationships that aren't conducive to productivity at work. Sometimes mm -hmm. personal feelings can come into play. 
So I found that as a woman, as a minority at that, Mm -hmm. a lot of folks would challenge my authority. And so in them challenging me, it also added and compounded to the feeling of imposter syndrome. I think, go ahead. Yeah, continue. No, as a woman, it's uh, because I was not uh, realizing it, but uh, sometimes it's a bit uh, complicated. I mean, when you are, because me, I am always so surrounding by men. Okay, they are, they are really nice with me and so on. But uh, I think that if sometimes you do, <laughs> okay, I, I also have a strong uh, <laughs> personality, I will say. Mm-hmm. But uh, sometimes men can do things that a uh, woman should, in theory, should not do. do I, I love say. that. That is so but, true. But okay, I, I, I also have a strong personality, so I will not say that uh, <laughs> I am. Uh, but I, I believe that uh, sometimes it's, um, for me, it, it was not, uh, it was not, uh, it didn't stop me actually, but I can understand that for some people, it can be like, uh, okay, uh, this is too much for me or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I, I, me too, huh? sometimes I act, I am not really nice person or, so I mean, it's because sometimes it's, uh, you don't even realize your behavior, it's uh, really hurting other people or whatever. Mm-hmm. But in some field, you really need a strong mind, I will say. And, yes. and unfortunately, the imposter syndrome can also like, uh, push you away and uh, yeah, it stop you for, right from, for, for, from uh, going further in whatever project you have. Exactly. So one of the things about me and, and the way I was raised, I am very considerate and very nice, sometimes okay. uh, too nice and it's a detriment, right? Because I want to help others and be of service. What I found in transitioning from a support role, a support technical role, to then being a project manager is that I had to be more assertive. And Mm -hmm. the assertiveness was kind of like a contradiction to my personality because I always wanna help and be nice about how I accomplish things. Mm -hmm. However, in certain instances, I had to assert myself and make folks aware that when I'm asking something of you, you have Mm -hmm. to actually execute and provide. Otherwise it, damages my reputation. It doesn't let me do my work correctly. And it causes an issue in our interpersonal relationship. So I learned to manage that. I learned to assert myself and to deal with that imposter syndrome that was caused by people challenging my authority. Mm. But as you said, as women, we do kind of have to operate or are forced to operate in a different way than men are. Like you in the the companies that I worked for in a department that I worked for, which was information technology, it was primarily men, a lot of men. If if there was another woman there, it would just be me and her. (laughs) But in my experience, I was usually the only female in the department. So then that dynamic working with men, having them challenge my authority or undermine my authority because I'm a woman and a minority woman at that, you know, Hispanic, there were a, a lot of challenges, but I learned to address them. So I'm so glad that you, you brought that up about the dynamics with men and women in the workforce. So let me ask you, I mentioned that I was challenged, my authority was challenged. Did you have that same experience and did that contribute to imposter syndrome for you? No, <laughs> because I am uh, I will I am a bit uh, really strong minded. Mm-hmm. So I think people usually don't really. Uh... Oh, they wouldn't mess with you. They're like, no, so we can't mess with her. <laughs> Unfortunately, yeah, I think it's. Uh, I don't realize it, but sometimes I'm like, okay, maybe I am a bit too much. But uh, yeah, the imposter syndrome. I think it was more um, on the scientific. Um, scientific uh, recognition or thing like this, you know, like uh, when I present the data or when I write the papers, how people will receive the, the, the result if they will say, oh, I am, uh, she's stupid, or oh, she cannot, uh, she cannot talk properly, or oh, she's, you know, this, all of these uh, movies that you have in your head sometimes. Yes. 
But uh, when you do the presentation after, everybody's like, oh, it was fantastic or whatever. Mm -hmm. But okay, at the beginning, it was not fantastic. It was not <laughs> impressive. It was really awful. <laughs> so but, let, me, let me ask you in regards to your, you mentioned speaking properly. And I know mm -hmm. that a couple of times we've talked and you've brought up your accent. Do you <laughs> yes. think that your accent, at least the way you think about it, is an impediment? Does that uh, contribute to the imposter syndrome? Uh, no, no, <laughs> no. Okay, sometimes I, I am a bit uh, shy, but I am already happy to be able to speak in English. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, okay, not proper English, but uh, I can speak in English. Compared to great. people, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I understand you perfectly well, and your accent, you. in my opinion, is is beautiful. But I wanted to ask that because I wasn't sure if that had some contributing factor. I have spoken to other women where their accent makes them less confident, and and not necessarily contributes to imposter syndrome, but it makes them a little bit shyer uh, to the point mm. where they don't want to contribute or be as vocal. Uh, yeah, because also I have a French accent in English, mm -hmm. but in French, I have an accent also. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's interesting. <laughs> yeah, 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 super. Yeah. <laughs> so I have accent everywhere. Uh -huh. So usually, um, because I come from a Caribbean island, so mm -hmm. I am not uh, from France, France, I am uh, from the Caribbean island. Mm -hmm. And uh, basically, when I arrived in France, it was, I had a bit to adapt, I would say, because people were not really understanding what I was saying. Mm. But uh, okay, I was not shy from this, but uh, it's a bit uncomfortable when you have to re uh, repeat like uh, 10 times and people don't do the effort to try to understand what you are saying or whatever. So sometimes it's mm -hmm. good that it can also feel like, oh my God, I should not talk too much or whatever because of the accent or, yeah. Can yeah, that can definitely pose its own challenges, but you made a good point there. People were not willing or trying to understand yeah. you. They were putting all the onus on you and that's not really fair. But I'm glad to see that you didn't <laughs> that prevent you from, you know, being vocal and talking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, so now that you have had your experiences with imposter syndrome and you've prepared more and gotten better at what you do, are there any tips and tricks that you would suggest to others for managing imposter syndrome? Mm, work more. But uh, I don't know if it's a good, uh, good uh, tip, but uh, it's really you have to believe in yourself, I would say. It's the mm -hmm. self-confidence part to know that, uh, okay, it's not good yet, but maybe tomorrow it will be better. Mm -hmm. But, uh, and when I look now, I'm like, okay, I really did a lot of progress. And also not to compare yourself with others because you will never be like at the same, uh, there will always be someone better than you and someone worse than you or whatever. So mm -hmm. if you start to also say, okay, I'm not good and so on compared to this person, okay, you can do it once, but not, stay glued to that, I will say. You have to move on to say, okay, I am better than yesterday or whatever. And step by step, you will improve more, I think, in your perception of the imposter syndrome. Yes, I love that. You made a lot of good points there. So one, confidence, having confidence in yourself, your skill set, when you bring to the table. Two is comparison, not comparing yourself to others because you are your own person. You have your own story and experiences. So you should go off of that, not what somebody else is doing. And of course, continued preparation, right? Whatever yes. your field is, whatever you're pursuing, if, if it's uh, something that requires specific knowledge, keep working towards that because the more you do, the more authority, credibility, and knowledge you get. So that's really great. Those are actually amazing tips thank that you. you that you provided thank you <laughs> now, but you you can learn with a coach like you i will say yeah <laughs> but, uh, i mean <laughs> some it's long it take a long time to learn it by yourself but if you have someone helping you or whatever i think um, can be really useful and uh, mm -hmm. i will say sometimes i regret i didn't have someone also to okay i am also I, 
difficult to focalize, but to have someone to help you and uh, day to day, of, uh, not day to day, uh, yeah. but to come back and tell you, okay, maybe you can go in this direction or whatever. So I think coach or mentor, I don't know uh, which this one. This is exactly. amazing. <laughs> No, See, Laura, it's... Laura's advertising for me. She's advertising <laughs> <laughs> what I can bring to the table. So yes, Laura, those are good points. Obviously, you know, as we get older, as we gain more experience, we learn and we adapt. So a lot of us have had to, through our failures and through our experiences, learn how to manage imposter syndrome amongst other things. But working with a coach, working with someone like myself, who's a mindset coach, will definitely be a shorter path to addressing those issues, whether it's imposter syndrome, confidence, fear moving forward, clarity and consistency. So if you find that you need a little bit of help, definitely reach out to a coach, yeah. start having those conversations to develop a plan that will work for you. Yeah. <laughs> so thanks, Laura. Thanks for <laughs> putting that out there. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so Laura going back to uh, the conversations that you've had with your peers now that you've uh, learned a little bit more or feel like you have more authority and have a handle on imposter syndrome have you shared with your peers or maybe helped them to manage some of that imposter syndrome or create a, a support network or group to address that authority when it comes to the data and presenting of the data Mm, I unfortunately no. I think you should. I think that would be great. <laughs> no, would really, be yeah, think, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it can be really interesting, but um, for numerous reasons, <laughs> I, I didn't. Get it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, and also the problem with my imposter syndrome, I wanted just to add this, mm -hmm. is that uh, in the behavior that I was with other people, it was also, you know, sometimes because you don't feel like comfortable in your own shoes, you reflect a very bad image on other people. So as for example, if I am scared to, to the thing, I can reply not politely, I will say to someone, mm. because I, I feel like, uh, you know, I don't know how to explain it properly. But sometimes um, the, the fact that you have the, the imposter syndrome, you don't feel comfortable in your own shoes. So you are scared to, to, to give proper, good and proper answers or whatever. I don't know if it's, it's good. Or, <laughs> but I worked on this because I, I really feel like at the beginning, I was not, uh, because of this, I was not com feeling comfortable with me. Mm -hmm. So I was not projecting a good image on other also. So I could have been... Uh, so this was, this was, I think it was also a part of my uh, self-esteem uh, or something like this. Mm -hmm. And also syndrome, self-esteem, not confidence, but uh, it's all a mix. And at the end, you are not really maybe kind enough with people. But yes. all of this, it's like a mix of, uh, unfortunately. So I don't know if I should say that I, I, sometimes I was not nice, but I worked on it to try to <laughs> be nicer. You know what, you were honest. Also. You're yeah, very yeah, honest with yourself and, and, and what you've gone through. And, and you're right. So imposter syndrome, like we said earlier, perfectionism is, is tied to that. So is confidence. So is esteem and fear. And when you yeah. feel imposter syndrome and all of those other emotions, how you interact with the external, your relationships, the people around you, how you communicate, even how you communicate with yourself mm -hmm. uh, mentally, that self-talk it can be negative, right? Yeah. You can be unkind to others because it's a form of lashing out, a form of punishment, right? Yeah. I should have met you before. <laughs> <laughs> and then, right? I would have known you, so you see. <laughs> Guys, listen to Laura. Go ahead and sign up for some coaching sessions with me because you might need my help. <laughs> I love it. You're, I love that you're advertising my services for me. I really appreciate it. Yeah, you're welcome, my sister. <laughs> no, but no. I, I love to be of service, uh, Laura. So I'm glad that you're, because you've experienced this, you're seeing the benefit of what it could be like to have a little bit of guidance, a little bit of help. Yes. Um, and I'm so happy that you, in your journey, 
you realized that you weren't communicating at your best, that you maybe weren't as, as kind to others because of that imposter syndrome. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, you learn. I mean, you learn. It's, uh, you should learn. And uh, also you can have input from other people and uh, you will improve, but you should not say, oh, I am, uh, I am this, I am this, and not, we should move at the end of the day. It's, the, it's hard, it's really hard because to realize, uh, to realize all of the, the little flaws in your life, it's hard, but uh, well, you can reality, have help if you want. Well, the Check reality it. is that we don't, and I'm sorry for, for interrupting. Um, no, no. If you have a thought that you want to finish, please go ahead. And finish no, it's okay. It. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just wanted to say that sometimes we need help, right? We as individuals, we know what we need to do. We know what the steps are to get from point A to point B, right? But we're not always confident in pursuing those steps yeah. or even don't, we may not even have the right motivation. So the right mm -hmm. why to move forward. And a lot of times, and I've been guilty of, my, of this myself in the past, mm -hmm. is that you just say, I'll address it later or I'll work mm -hmm. on it later. And you don't dedicate the time that you have dedicate to address those emotions, to address the mindset. And so what people don't realize is that if your mindset isn't where it needs to be, if how you feel about yourself and where you want to go isn't right, mm -hmm. then you're actually setting yourself up for failure that you can avoid, right? Okay. You can have as many major goals or small goals as you want, mm -hmm. but if the internal work and the mental work isn't there, Mm -hmm. then at some point you're going to stumble and you're self-sabotaging. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? So the work has to be done here. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so Laura, you are ahead of the curve when it comes to that because you learned the hard way. Through yeah, the hard way. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. I love that you're so open and so honest about your experiences when it comes to imposter syndrome and the other emotions that are associated and tied to it. Because so, I mean, if we talk about it, at least maybe I can help someone who is listening to this mm -hmm. and they know like, okay, maybe that's also me uh, and so on. And because the more you talk about the, the thing, uh, I mean, you can say, oh, I am the nicest person in the world, but okay, people maybe, oh, I don't know, or the meanest person in the world, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But it's always good, I mean, and for other women to, to know a bit more about uh, this type of feelings. Yes. Like, uh, it's not uh, the end of the world. You can improve, you, you can do work on you if you feel like uh, you are too mean. So, okay, but what do I do uh, to improve myself? What, uh, which work I do, I take a coach or whatever. But uh, it, there, it's not the, the end of the thing. You can still be a new one. If you say, okay, next year, I set my goal for next year. You're a new you next year. And we should not be um, blocked in the past or whatever. Yes. So you create awareness, right? In yes. this podcast, you know, the whole point of it is to provide information that is going to empower our audience to lead better lives, right? So in having this conversation, we're providing information, uh, creating more awareness around the topic of imposter syndrome and confidence and self-esteem yeah. and fear, all of the yeah. emotions that are related and perfectionism, and right? Perfectionism. <laughs> <laughs> Which let me tell you, I am so guilty of perfectionism. Like, obviously I have the tools to work through it, but before that, before I worked with a coach because I didn't just get here, you know, on my own. Mm -hmm. I also worked with someone to address some of what I was feeling. And then eventually that prompted me, along with feedback from my peers and, and family and friends, to pursue, you know, a career in, in coaching. But mm -hmm. I had help as well to address some of that. So now I'm able to manage it uh, accordingly. But the point that I was trying to make with perfectionism is that I was guilty of that for a long time. It, it, it plagued 
everything that I did and kind of made me feel stuck where I couldn't move mm -hmm. forward with some things. So I just want to mention again, perfectionism is an illusion. If you <laughs> yes. suffer from it uh, and you need some guidance, definitely seek the help or do your own inner work. There are lots of free tools and resources out there to address mm -hmm. perfectionism. Even as a coach today, I still experience it but I'm able to manage it because of my skills that end my knowledge. Yeah. And so, it's not too late. <laughs> you no, can it's never. It. <laughs> it's never too late. We're constantly yeah. growing and evolving, right? It's a matter of taking that first step to mm. address whichever emotion you're feeling. Yeah. So Laura, I'm curious, <laughs> anything fun that you want to share with us that you want folks to know about you? Uh, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh, there's that shyness. <laughs> yeah. No, nothing special. Nothing special. <laughs> I, am I think you're special. Yeah, thank you. I think you you've too. shown how special you are already with, <laughs> with being open and honest about your experience, which I appreciate. And as you said, it will help someone. Someone will hear this at some point and they'll have an aha moment and it'll resonate with them. So I want to thank you for I mean, also what you said, it was interesting. I appreciate that. Yes, That's the whole reason why I'm here. <laughs> not only me, you too. Huh? It's, uh, it's <laughs> <work. laughs> well, it's not about me, right? It's about <laughs> you and our audience and, and how we can help them. Okay. <laughs> so Laura, is there any, any last sort of comments or feedback that you want to send out to the audience, any advice or tips? Uh, I, uh, what I, I would say is like, uh, you can change. It's something I say, you can change, you can improve. It's not because like uh, you were like this yesterday that you will stay like this. If you want to, for any type, imposter syndrome, perfect, anything, you can improve, you can, and thank God we now have uh, internet. So you can even type on the Google, a Google search for whatever you want. Mm -hmm. And you will have, uh, it's, it's, we have YouTube, you, on YouTube, you have 5,000, uh, 5 million, or I don't know what. Uh. <laughs> so really, if you want to improve, for example, me, I also follow training, you follow training, you are the coach. So we, it's not too late. So really, if you want to change, you, you can, and sometimes, um, Sometimes uh, it will be difficult. It's not easy also to, to see your flaws, to see that, okay, it's not good. But at the end of the day, uh, you, can, you can do it Great. if you want. <laughs> Thanks for sharing that. And I just want to say I am really thankful and grateful that you decided to come on today, share Thank your you. expertise, share your advice and feedback and your own experience. Really appreciate Thank it. And I'm sure <laughs> the audience does too. Thank you. <laughs> so everyone, last little tidbit that I'll leave you with uh, just to round out the discussion. As we mentioned, imposter syndrome is tied to so many emotions from perfectionism, fear, self-esteem, your confidence. If you find that you're struggling with addressing those emotions, definitely explore the various resources that are available to you, whether it's, as Laura mentioned, YouTube, a Google search, friends and family, or even a coach definitely get the help you need to address that. And as I usually say, preparation, accountability, execution, and resolve are key to your success. Thanks for joining me today, Laura. Hopefully we can talk again soon. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>